Um, so the first thing is I'd just like to thank the sponsors. Thanks very much for this opportunity. It's the first time we've done something quite like this, and I've found it very enjoyable so far. Um, so uh, we are an equity research firm, um, and our perspective is on what we've seen over the last 20 years as a result of people getting funding with the VC community and the kind of things you might consider, look out for, and the things that we think are key if you want success in that space. A um, little bit about us, so uh, our client based market capitalization comfortably exceeds 400 billion, um, includes a couple of very large uh, US businesses you would have heard of. Um, ACF was selected invest in class institutional global research firm by OTC Markets in the US, uh, similar things in the UK and in Europe. Um, we're informally recommended by a handful of other exchanges as well as so due diligence providers. So that's the suited bit. Um, this is me when I'm not this. Uh, so about five years ago, we decided to change how we do our business. And uh, we now have people work wherever they want to, in the way in which they feel most comfortable. And it's allowed us to serve clients in a lot of different time zones and across the world, uh, particularly you know, the US and, and Europe, etc. Now the other reason I put this picture up is because it reminded me of a story or an experience I had um, December time, which I thought was kind of relevant. Um, <clears throat> I was sitting with uh, on a horse that uh, was probably too much for me to ride, and I was definitely having troubles with it the first thing in the morning. And my instructor, who is um, a silver medalist at the Olympian for some years ago, could see that I was getting tense, not sure what I was doing, etc. And um, so she started talking about her business ideas. And these business ideas were really, really interesting, but they weren't structured in a way that was investable. And so, and I thought about that, and um, my riding improved for the rest of that session, and I managed to understand how my horse operated and what he was feeling. Um, and at the end of the lesson, uh, I got down and I started talking to her more about her business ideas in return for the way in which she had helped me. And then two weeks later, she signed up as a client. And um, we are close to having her ready to go forth for her first set of races. So, that's a little bit about me in the background. But I like this quote because it's straightforward, it absolutely hits an nail on the head for tonight. Um, and, it's bar, and it's from Audrey McClain. So, we need to think like a venture capitalist. So, she's often seen as a Silicon Valley titan. Audrey McClain raised money at a time when women were not funded in Silicon Valley. Uh, I think when she got her first funding, she was actually pregnant, which was it went against her even more. Um, she was introduced actually to a VC, uh, and that's it, and I'll come on to that later. Um, but she's since created $5 billion in value, and one of the messages is that a part of her nickname is the person to go to if you want VC funding. And that's because she can make the introductions. So, some key things. So, some three key ideas I want you to think about in terms of. What a VC is thinking when you come to the door. So the first one is uh, VC minds. They hate risk. It may sound counterintuitive, but they do. So they take high risk investments, which are partly the investment within the business that they are investing in, and systemic risk, which is everything they can't control outside and that you can't control as an entrepreneur either. So it could be policy, it could be global market crash, it could be suddenly your particular area becomes completely unfashionable for a reason that you cannot control. Uh, by definition, many, many of their investments will fail. So VCs take high risk, they need high expected returns, otherwise they fail. So you have to remember that when you're talking to them. They understand risk, they just don't like it, they are risk averse. So they work very hard to mitigate these risks, and you potentially are a part of that risk mitigation. They answer to their own set of investors who give them the money to manage. So their livelihoods and lifestyles are on the line as well as yours. And they consider it healthy that there is a penalty to failure, which means they will take your assets away from you if you don't manage them in the way that they have helped. VC wants, tick the boxes. Entrepreneurial team is what they love to see. They want technical innovation. Not 10% better, but 10 times better. Strategic market insight is really key in the kind of thing that they look for, and especially in terms of your ability to go to market. So knowing your channels and having a theory, an idea, or something you've actually proved that works to get your product there and get it sold. 
sector experience. Don't come to them, especially if it's your first time around, with an idea that you think is great, but of which you have no practical experience. A leader who has what it takes to become a future CEO. Entrepreneurial teams often forget this. They don't think that far ahead, or they assume one of them has the qualities. But it really is not that true. So if you're building a team, think about it. You can still control it. You can still get all the returns. But think about your manager, who the VC thinks could be your CEO in the future. CEO in the future. And the third point, VC visions, the roadmap. They want to know that you've thought through it, and they want you to come up with the same answers they would come up with. So, introductions. You start with the introduction. They love to come across you via a referral from somebody who's already made a lot of money for them in their, one of their investments. Patterns. They love patterns, and they're very good at compare and contrast. So you will go through with your original idea, and they would have seen many ideas that are similar. They're looking for the nuance in what you have. They're very quick to spot it. They like a real market opportunity. Ideas are common, execution is rare. Disruption. If you don't have disruption, especially in the tech space, don't bother. But it is pretty true of almost anything you might think VC funding is appropriate for. They want to see that the risk profile declines over time. And as a result of that, when you agree the milestones or the milestones that you pitch in, be very sure that each milestone reduces the risk that the VC is exposed to. This is what they love. Try not to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. What to look out for? So three thoughts. Don't come with a large investor base already, particularly an inexperienced one. So we had a client recently who came to us and said, can you carry out some research for us? Uh, we want to appeal to a certain type of VC, we went through the mandate with them, and we said, how many investors do you already have? We have about 40, and we pretty much stopped the conversation there, because what we told them was, this is not how you're going to get funded. You have already basically chosen the crowdfunding route, or you might want to choose an ICO route to continue, but you've essentially locked yourself out of VC already. And in their case, they were inexperienced investors in most cases. Don't come with multiple revenue streams. A VC thinks that if you come with multiple re revenue streams, one or all of them won't make money. And what they want you to do is to focus on the one revenue stream, because they have lots of investments to manage, and they want to be able to focus on one revenue stream as well. So the idea that you have a more attractive package with five revenue streams, or whatever, is wrong. And a little anecdote, we have, a, we have a, my fourth business, which has nothing to do with financial services, is on the drawing board. It has five units to it. Four of them are investable. Three of them are definitely IPO candidates, and the fifth one is neither of those. What we will do with our business is each one of those four investable units will be presented individually with separate teams to run in sequence rather than in parallel. And that's based on our experience. Um, don't come with full ratchet funding agreements. Sort this out before. In other words, you can't get into a free rider problem. You can't allow the second tier of, of investors or the second round of investors to have the same benefits that the first round got for the high risk that they took. It's a common mistake, but you have to sort that out. But it could apply to any kind of investor and shareholder agreement. Get that stuff clean and sorted out before you go there. Don't come with seven types of shareholding or seven types of share. They just want all the risk. That's what most of them want. So the class of share. What's under the surface? Risks to the control of your idea. So three sirens you should look out for. Money mirage is magnetic. You're just there. It looks in reach. It's a lot of money compared to what you've had over your, your really sweat period, and it's very, very tempting to say yes, especially if you've only had one offer. And yet we would say to you, in spite of all of that, be very careful. Dilution and loss of control can happen earlier than you want. And when you want more rounds, and you may then find that you want to go to more bigger VCs and PE, if you have over-diluted, they won't accept it. Heads of terms can torpedo your dreams. This is a very important area, and it's very easy to get this wrong. Choose the right funds with the right time runways. If you are set a, a number of goals over 24 months because the fund closes in 24 months, the high probability is you will fail some of those milestones, and the higher probability is that will trigger loss of control. If the ship hits the hidden box, 
you will likely go down too. Because within those control clauses, you are usually deprived of all your rights and all the value in the business. Your shareholding is either diluted to zero, or a different class of shares is issued, or you find that the salary package or the closing amount that you are offered, you just can't get without a huge fight. Key to that is really good lawyers who know what they're doing. That does not necessarily mean magic circle or top 20, but it does mean good lawyers and good advisors. So just a little sort of comparison. ICOs, tokens, and cryptocurrencies. Are they a substitute to VC funding? They look attractive. There are three differences that we think are important. It's a fork in the road. You go down one route, you won't be going down VCPE. You go down the other route, and equally, you will find that you then end up on equity markets or do a, 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 a trade sale. It's quicker than a VC raise, a lot quicker. $20 million in a few hours, that's more than possible. You, but you don't get the management support from your new owners, because your new owners tend to be users of your product, especially if you're in tech. The benefit, of course, is they talk to other people and bring them in, but they can't help you. They're inexperienced. You may have to pay the funds raised back. China changed the rules. Uh, very famous, Baihu.com raised $20 million in a series of hours. Three months later, they had to pay the whole lot back. Now, you may say, well, that's China, but that's where a lot of the ICOs happen. You may still say, well, that's China. But in the US, the SEC has just put two ICOs that were supposedly asset backed one was diamonds, one was property, and it turns out there was no organizational structure behind them, and the SEC is putting them both to the ringer, and quite possibly the uh, entrepreneurs will end up in business. Final thought. VC funding is your first professional and institutional funding round in most cases. It can be the beginning of your reality, it can be the end of your reality. Get inside your VC's head and remember, if you deliver professionally, you can always play again. Thank you.